I'm the God of the miraculous. I'm the God of signs. I'm the God of wonders. I can even take what is old and make it new. I can take something that's not there out of nothing. I can create a world and a universe. How much more can I give you what is totally absent and lacking where you've had a no report? I give you a yes report today. Where you've had a no go, I have given you freedom of access and I've said freely go. People gave you up and said, as good as dead and buried. But I want you to know that I've picked you up. I've raised you up today. I declare it before even it happens. I speak it even before it's seen. No, no, I pick you up. I raise you up, says the Lord. And where they said there is nothing, and where you thought there's no hope, I will show you that I'm the God of the impossible, the God of the miraculous. Nothing is impossible for me. And I will do the thing that you even dared to believe, to ask. I will do for you today, says the Lord. There are some things that are going to come to pass, and you're going to have to dredge the memory of it out of your mind because you uttered a thought but I heard it as prayer and I'm going to answer you today and you will see the manifestation not afar off awesome welcome to outrageous grace thank you for tuning in wherever you are from all over the world uh, there's a lot of people here it's our miracle pool day today and uh, I'm going to preach the word and then f- folks are going to be baptized and then they're going to walk through the water and uh, signs, wonders, and miracles are going to happen, and great breakthrough. So if you're watching, um, maybe you want to get a teacup of water or a jug of water, you can sprinkle it, or you can get a bucket of water, a dish of water, and stand in it, or whatever. But I'm trusting God, and together we are trusting God for you, that today is your great breakthrough day. Whether it's healing, whether it's salvation for family members, whether it's finances, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's out of your ability... You need a miracle. But then it's in His ability. So we speak miracles for you today in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus came preaching. And uh, when he was preaching, he was taking over from John the Baptist. And we've been touching on this a little while. And I've got a fly so we give enough time for the miracle pool. And uh, he came preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And I share this, uh, and, and some of you have heard it. What, what Jesus was saying, what John the Baptist was saying, and when he commissioned the disciples, the 12 and the 72, and then us as well to go and preach this gospel of the kingdom, what he was talking about was a mind change. In other words, he was talking about the fact of us having to so change our minds that it will change the whole direction of our lives. And when he said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, he says, you've got to change your stinking thinking. Yeah. 
Amen. Basically, what he was saying, he was saying, because the kingdom is here. He was speaking to a nation who were expecting a Messiah to come and lift off the oppressive reign of the Romans. But, but that was not how the kingdom of God was to come. We see the, the, the preceding prophetic words all the way through the Old Testament. And I shared two weeks ago what the kingdom of God is not. The kingdom of God is not the nation of Israel. The kingdom of God is not even a Christian country. The kingdom of God is most certainly not heaven when you die. But it is heaven on earth. It's God's rule and reign on earth. And one day when he was praying, his disciples came and said, Lord, teach us to pray even as John taught his disciples. And he said, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Where to? To where they were, where they were praying. Thy will be done. Where? On earth as it is in heaven. And not as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven. Just another dimension away. What's true there for God needs to be true here for us. Isn't that right? And it's not some rapture thing where we're going. And our oh, shame, they've got caught up on it again. Uh, evidently, the end of the world is December 21st because of Hurricane Sandy. And they've been wrong every other time since the 1800s. They've been wrong. Just recently, I went and stayed on a, on a farm in the Dahlstrom area. Beautiful, beautiful farm. And the couple bought that farm so that they would be self-sufficient to escape the, the Antichrist and the end of the world. Well, the due date came and went, came and went, came and went, came and went. Billboards came and went. Hurricanes came and went. All that kind of thing. So now he's CEO of a company in Hong Kong. And uh, she flies back every uh, three, four times a year to come and visit the farm. But I'm so glad that they bought it because I can go and rest there. Amen. 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 See, that's, that's the wrong theology. Amen. So all the way through the Bible, all the way from the Old Testament through in Exodus 19, God spoke to the people of Israel and he said, listen, if you will obey me, even the law, it's true for the law, how much more for the gospel? He said, I will make you a kingdom of priests. Amen. Amen. In other words, a kingdom, a domain of kings, but you will be priest kings. And, and Jesus says the same thing in Revelations that uh, John writes and records it, that by his blood he's made us kings and priests. Psalm 2, I mean that awesome psalm. I mean it's amazing. God says, I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. And the uttermost parts of the earth will be his possession. Psalm 24, verse 70, I mean, 7, you know that, um, or verse, verse 10, you know that awesome psalm where it says, Lift up your heads, O you gates, that the king of glory may come in. Isn't that right? He says it twice. Who is this king of glory? It's Lord God, strong, mighty in battle. Woo-hoo. Amen. So all the way from the Old Testament, and I, and I mean, in the last message, we read the scriptures. All the way through, God is already talking about a king with a kingdom, a king with a kingdom. Amen. Kingdom is the domain of the king where he has dominion. So it's where the king will have the rule and reign. So the kingdom of God is the kingdom of heaven. It's the same thing. In other words, it's where God rules and reigns. Yeah. You can read it in Psalm 45. It says, my tongue is the pen of a ready writer. He says, I've been stirred by a noble theme. He says, I will address my song to the king. Psalm 70, the whole Psalm, 72, sorry. Psalm 110, where the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. In other words, he's going to sit on a throne and he's going to rule and reign. You need to read it in Isaiah 2, verses 1 to 4. Isaiah 11, 1 to 19. You're getting the message shorthand today. Jeremiah 33, Jeremiah 22. In Daniel chapter 7, oh, I should listen to this. This is really awesome. But listen to what it says in Daniel chapter 7. Um, and, uh, and, and, and Daniel chapter 7 and verses 13 and 14. I mean, it's so awesome. I mean, and it's not the only reference in Daniel. Daniel, when he saw um, the, the rock carved out that would take the statue down, in other words, it would end all other kingdoms, he said this rock was carved not by human hands, and it struck the statue that uh, Nebuchadnezzar had seen in the dream and, uh, and brought it down. And it, this rock grew and grew and grew and it filled the whole earth. Listen, God's kingdom is going to fill the whole earth. It hasn't filled the whole earth yet, so how are we going to go? It hasn't filled the whole earth. How is Hurricane Sandy the beginning of the end or the end? Hmm. 
Don't listen to that stuff. You must be like me. You must be bold, okay? When people start telling you that, you say to them, give me a piece of paper. I'll put it in writing that that's not the end of the world. Zane came up with an awesome idea. Let's have contracts written up. Let's have contracts. We carry the contracts with us. And they say, it's the end of the world, December 21st. Okay, sign this contract. Sign everything over to me. If you believe it's the end of the world. Because after December 21st, you're out of here. Me, I believe I'm staying. Sign over the Merc. Sign over the house. Sign over everything. You'll quickly, you'll see how quickly they become unbelievers in that. Isn't that right? Well, you know, maybe. Mm, mm, anyway. Is that okay? Daniel 7, verses 13 and 14. This is awesome, man. He says, In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of uh, every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away, and his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. So how is that prophecy fulfilled when Jesus comes and he says, Hey, everybody, you Jews, change your mind. Kingdom's here. Amen. Mr. Good place to say a really loud amen. 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 Well, where else? If you read in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, and it's quoted uh, in, in one of the Gospels where it talks about Bethlehem Ephrathah, out of you will come forth one who is the ruler in Israel. Zechariah 9, verses 9 and 10, Behold, your king is coming lowly. And riding on a donkey. It just didn't fit the picture. That's all. Amen. They thought he'd come riding on a white horse with all his armies behind him. Slug, you know, cut the heads off, you know, blood flowing, all this kind of thing. A little bit like they do now. And, 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 you know, and that's how the kingdom of God would come. No. In Luke chapter 1 verses 28 to 34, when the angel Gabriel was talking to Mary, God said, God will give him the throne of David. God said to David in 2 Samuel chapter 7, verses 12 and 13, David, you wanted to build me a house, that's awesome, but I'm going to build you a house. And one of your descendants will sit on the throne forever. Amen. 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 So Jesus comes, and the blind people and the sick go, Son of David, and he heals them. The kingdom was coming to them. Amen. Amen. So we see it all the way through. Let me just give you a little portrait of the king. You know, we're going to carry on with the message, you know, of the kingdom for the next few weeks. But let's just look at the portrait of the king um, prophetically, okay? So go to Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12. It's a good place to start. And uh, we'll carry on with the series of the king uh, and the kingdom for the next few weeks, maybe months. Who knows? Listen to what it says. Um, you know that, that at one stage, the, the, the people, the crowds, wanted to come and make Jesus king by force. Yeah. Yeah. When they tried to come and make him king by force and put a crown on his head and all of that kind of thing, he took off. Because yeah. he said, this is not the way the kingdom will come. Yeah. 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 It won't come by a vote. Because yeah. I've got the votes. Yeah. Amen. It won't come by you, you know, appointing me king. It comes by succession, and I got it from the king. Amen. And so, so he withdrew, you know, and he and he left the place. But listen to what it says in verse 18. This was to fulfill in verse 17 what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah. And if you go to Isaiah, you will see it there. But um, he said, "Here is my servant, whom I have chosen, the one I love." In whom I delight. Listen to this. I will put my spirit on him and he will proclaim justice to the nations. Awesome thing about Jesus the King is that he's coming bringing justice to the nations. Now, don't think that justice is a negative judgment. No, he's bringing the justice of the cross. That which he died to secure for us on the cross is the justice that Jesus is bringing for us. Amen? Amen. When he rises to show justice to us, it's not coming, he's not coming to say, all right, you miserable bunch of rotten sinners, now I'm going to judge your sins. No, because you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. Where is your sin? If it's been as removed as far as the east is from the west, what sin is he going to judge? If it's been buried in the sea of God's forgetfulness, what sin is he going to judge? If you've been made perfect by one sacrifice for Ever, what sin is he going to judge? 
If you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ, the same as His, what is He going to judge? The only judgment that He will have is when the gavel comes down, poof, He will say, you're righteous and you're innocent because of my blood. Amen? So he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will say, look at the cross, and on the cross, your sin was paid for by my blood. If you will go to the cross, you will find justice for your sin. So justice and mercy meets together at the cross, because you can have mercy and the justice of God. Amen? So he will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not quarrel or cry out. You will not or no one will hear his voice in the streets. So how is this king going to rule and reign? How is he going to set up his kingdom? You're not going to hear him parading down the streets, going with loud hailers and saying, vote for King Jesus in the kingdom of heaven. Throwing leaflets out and offering free food or something, you know? You won't hear his voice. He doesn't need a crier to run ahead of him and to say, behold the king. Mm. You won't hear his voice in the streets. Isn't that right? But this is what it'll be like. A bruised reed he will not break. A smoldering wick he will not snuff out. I mean, it just shows the whole spirit with which the king will come. He'll find the bruised reeds and he'll bind them up and heal them. He'll find the smoldering wick, a life that's almost snuffed out, and he'll come and he'll fan it into flame because of his love. Amen? Amen. He'll come to the brokenhearted. He'll come to the hurting. Amen? Amen. Till he leads that justice to victory. And he says, and he will say, look at the justice of the cross. Look at the victory of what my blood did. Amen? In his name, the nations or the Gentiles will put their hope. You can read that in Isaiah 42 verses 1 to 4. So awesome king, a little bit of a portrait of this king. But now then, if that's the case, what is his method? The first thing is that he doesn't come with domination. Remember when uh, the people, you know, the, the chief priest sent out the temple guard to come and arrest Jesus and John, uh, um, he was betrayed with a kiss from uh, Judas, remember that uh, Peter drew the sword and in a reactionary moment went uh, for the head of one of the guys, Malchus, the servant of the high priest, um, and cut his ear off. You know, um, you know, don't think that Peter was inaccurate. He was going for the guy's head. He just ducked. He just got his ear trimmed off, you know. But then again, Jesus just, you know, told him, put away the sword. You know, the kingdom is not going to come like this. This is how the kingdom is going to come. And he takes and he puts the guy's ear back on. And it's healed. I mean, isn't that awesome? You know, Jesus said, we're going to do the greater works. I'm looking forward to those miracles. Amen. Someone's fingers cut off or hands cut off in the machine. And you pick it up and put it back on and put your hand over it and take it away. And there it is. It's fine. Amen. 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 I mean, that's a miracle that if you read it, you can almost miss it. Where Jesus picks up that ear and just sticks it on and it's like, what ear is missing? Isn't that right? So he won't come by domination. You know, he's not going to come. That's one of the ways that the Muslims expand their kingdom. If they can't do it by marriage or propagation of children, they will do it by domination. Jihad is one of the five pillars of Islam. But no, It won't be by legislation either. He's not going to come and set up his kingdom and start a parliament and start rules for a country um, and say, all right, to be in the kingdom, you need to do this. That's legislation. No, Jesus is not coming to do it that way either. Amen? He's going to set up his kingdom by revelation. Because he went around preaching and teaching and healing all the sick. When he taught one day, He taught a whole group of Pharisees and they put their faith in him initially. Later on, they changed their minds. But he said, if you come to know the truth, the truth will set you free. If you know the truth, then you really are my disciples in John chapter 8. So his kingdom comes by by revelation, by knowledge, by information. So when he brings the truth... There's a revelation in our hearts where our hearts change, and that's the best form of building a kingdom because you get the hearts of the people, because you give them truth. And all the truth that he preached was encapsulated in principles. Amen? Amen. 
And that's why Jesus would not preach ever without using a parable. Because he wanted to embody and encapsulate truth and get it across to people so they could understand. Because when the truth comes, amen, amen. listen, listen, there's only two kingdoms, the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of darkness, and the kingdom of light. There's no neutral ground. There's no no man's ground. There's no you know, dead man's territory or no man's land. There's nothing. There's no in between. If you're not in the kingdom of Jesus Christ, you're in the kingdom of darkness. Amen? So you need to be rescued. You need to be delivered. You need to be brought out of that kingdom. And the first thing you need to understand is where you are. Isn't that right? You need a revelation of, well, I'm not in that kingdom, so I must be in this kingdom, you know? And then when he preaches the truth, and that's what Paul was commissioned to do, to preach the gospel, to open the eyes of the blind, he said. You know, to make sure that they're delivered out of darkness and into light. Now, how many of you know when you accepted Jesus, you came out of darkness into light? You were translated. Amen. Amen. That's about the only rapture that's going to take place. You were all already raptured. Out of darkness into light. Out of the kingdom of the devil and into the kingdom of the Lord Jesus. And yes, we will be raptured when he appears amongst us. We'll be so caught up in that glory. Amen? Are you with me, guys? Awesome. So it's those principles. When Jesus teaches, he, 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 he um, brings revelation. And that's how the kingdom expands. He preaches, he teaches. We hear the truth. We come to the knowledge of the truth. When we, when we uh, get that, we get set free. And he whom the Son sets free, free indeed. Amen. John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Is that right? Amen. Amen. So look at John 18 and verse 37. This was when he was being interviewed by Pilate. When he was asked, he said, Am I a Jew? Pilate replied. It was your people and your chief priests who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would, put up, put, would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You're a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You are right in saying I'm a king. In fact, for this reason I was born and for this reason, I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of the truth listens to me. Now, let's just read into that verse a little bit. In other words, everyone who listens to the truth enters the kingdom of God. Amen? So listen, church. You're in the kingdom of God. And we'll look at it in the next few weeks, but we're not going to crowd the doorway. Is that right? We're not going to be all crowding the gate of the kingdom. Yay, well, I'm in the kingdom, you know. No, 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 we're going to go in and possess the kingdom. Isn't that right? And the things of the kingdom. So, so Jesus is a king and we're in the kingdom. Is that right? You know that, that people, we used to say, and even some of the, uh, the temple guard would come and say, yo, man, we've never heard anyone like this. He speaks with authority. Wow, the common people heard him gladly, says another translation. You know that uh, truth had gripped his own life. That he could say, I'm the way and the truth. In other words, I'm the embodiment of the kingdom. So if you want to get into the kingdom, listen to what I'm saying and embody that truth or, or acquire that truth. Augustine said this, whose life is lightning, um, his words are thunder. Second way that Jesus, um, you know, spread the kingdom. The first, it was so, it was not by domination, it was not by legislation. Thirdly, it was by revelation. But then secondly, and part of it is, it was also by demonstration. Amen. 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 Let's have a look at maybe just one verse. Okay, let's go to Matthew chapter 4. Just one verse. Is that right? Because I know you're all excited and you can't wait to get to the pool. Matthew chapter 4. Going on from these two brothers, and then it says this in verse 23. Jesus went to Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the what? Of the kingdom. To bring people to a knowledge of the truth, because the truth would set them free. So that was the revelation. What was the demonstration? And healing every disease. Everyone say, every disease. And sickness. Everyone say, and sickness. So in other words, the difference between a sickness and a disease, okay? 
but he healed them all, every one of them. Now this, you know, um, if you read earlier, no, in fact, if you read later, you will see that uh, Matthew says this was to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet Isaiah, he took up our infirmities and carried our diseases. Amen. So, so what happened there? Um, a few chapters later, Matthew is directly connecting to the prophecy of Isaiah. Is that okay? Amen. Yo, wow. Ooh, amen. Mm. So he healed all sickness. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought to him all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and he healed them. Amen. In brackets, all. Forever he revealed his heart. Amen? Yeah. Every person healed. Yeah. All sickness healed. Yeah. Every, there is nothing outside of the scope of God that he cannot heal. Yeah. If there's anything that can afflict a human being, God can heal it. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. God can heal the effects of drugs. Prescribed and non-prescribed. God can heal the effect of wasting degenerative disease. God can rebuild. Amen. God can restore. A few years ago, we had a conference and there was a lady sitting on the side over there. By the end of the conference, she noticed that <clears throat> the screen was getting very blurry. And she wasn't getting drunk like Pastor Herod. She was stone cold sober sitting there and she couldn't read the words on the screen. And when she took her glasses off, she realized she could read it perfectly. I'm serious. She flew back to Cape Town and left her glasses here. Amen. There's nothing outside of the scope of God's ability to heal. Is that right? So he demonstrates the kingdom when he heals. And we could go on and on and on and on and on. All right. But here it is. Turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. 1 